Hello number ones, welcome back to my channel. This is the Method on Speaking. I have recently read a few comments and uh, some of these comments were mentioning the idea of uh, the samurai and how honorable they were and the whole code of conduct and the bushido and, and they were speaking about this concept of honor linked with warfare linked to martial arts. Okay, And one of the reasons, uh, one of the reasons why one of the topics that uh, these discussions in these forums that I've read were dealing with was the idea of um, a samurai uh, would never uh, fight an opponent with a with a ranged weapon because it will be dishonorable. Uh, instead, you need to fight face to face. Um, you see, this this kind of statements not only they are the product of uh, pop culture, not only they are the product of a romanticized image of the samurai, which many people love so much that they don't even want to explore the reality of how of the historical samurai and the things that they did and didn't. But it is also the fruit and the evidence of profound ignorance on the topic. Ignorance also lean, links to uh, arrogance, they, they go hand in hand and often people who don't know, they speak and they want to be right and they want to correct people who know. Whereas when you study and you start opening your mind and understanding the depth of the fields that you're studying, and this happens with every uh, field, whether it be mathematics, whether you, whether you be a mathematician, whether you be a linguist, whether it be uh, anything really, history, philosophy, the more you study, the more this, this knowledge that you're learning humbles yourself because you start opening your eyes and understanding the depth of the subject that you're studying and how little you still know uh, compared to how much there is there to learn. Uh, and therefore also when you, when you make statements, it's very important to make statements in a humble way because um, even if you are a professional, even if you know what you're talking about, um, for example, with historical, there is always new evidence. There are there is new archaeological evidence. There is new, there are there, there are new empirical approach. There are new things that could change the light and change completely. And history might need to be rewritten. So it is important to always have that kind of approach. But these people they clearly lack that, um, and they say these things now. This is a testimony of, unfortunately, their lack of knowledge on this topic. Because this is a Tanegashi Mateppo, it's a matchlock type arquebus. It was originally made, these were made by the, or at least used by the Portuguese. The Portuguese introduced them to the Japanese. The Japanese, they liked these so much that they mass produced them to a point that actually Japan had more of these than the whole of Europe put together. So, um, did the samurai class use these? Absolutely. And Oda Nobunaga is an example of this. He saw this as an opportunity to win and he took advantage of this. So when he gave these, who did he give these to? To the Ashigaru, the light infantry, who for the most part would not be samurai. There are exceptions, but most of them are not samurai. And they, he gave these to his samurai. So, uh, you, you could have then a samurai who uh, was, for example, a messenger, a samurai who was doing something else, and you had the gunners. Is it absolutely uh, impossible to imagine a samurai refusing uh, to use this and telling his, his lord, uh, no, my lord, I will not use this because it's not honorable and I will just stick to my katana? Absolute fantasy. The samurai did use these because for a samurai, victory for your lord is honor. And sometimes, regardless of how you achieve it, so I believe the main problem is that often also we, when we imagine okay, the samurai, we hear that they followed a strict code of honor and we therefore copy paste all those expectations that we, we have okay, that are linked to our current modern and possibly western if you're from the west uh, concepts of honor that we give for granted. But how can you, without actually studying in details what it means to follow a code of honor in, in that time, for example, in the Sengoku Jidai, and possibly also studying the Sengoku Jidai, 
Um, how can you already imagine what it means to be honorable, okay, for a samurai in feudal Japan a good 800 or, or 900 years ago um, in a completely different country with a completely different culture? Uh, influenced by completely different, because for example the, the, the code that samurai used, particularly the one developed uh, later in the Edo period, was linked to permeated by Confucianism and Confucianism uh, and also some Buddhist principles. So there are a lot of things that you need to understand before you can start uh, realizing and imagining what it means to be honorable. So, uh, whereas what we do often is that the typical person is, is a, let's say, a, a Western person who is um, looking at uh, these things and has some expectations which are all going through the filter okay, of his culture and the fact that we are in the modern day. So there are things that change, perspective change of even in the last century or so um, there are things that people did a century ago that now are deemed to be wrong and vice versa. There are things that were considered to be wrong a century ago and now they're not anymore. And so imagine when we talk about a thousand years, a thousand years where generations and centuries have changed continuously. Imagine how different perspective will be in that case. Honor for a samurai means to um, serve his lord to bring fame and power and riches to his lord and there are many different means that are considered to be acceptable or at least were considered to be acceptable in uh, Sengoku Jidai etc that if we look at them now um, it means I mean to bring honor power and riches to your your feudal lord that if you look at them now through our uh, as I said before Western uh, perspective they will look like anything but honorable. Uh, that doesn't mean that the samurai as a warrior caste didn't have any uh, code of conduct before. Uh, they surely did have discipline, they surely did have some rudimentary form of conduct, but the very articulated spiritual philosophical um, approach of the Bushido that we see linked to the concept of the samurai, we uh, have to consider a part of the samurai and his life during a period of peace. During war, when you've got clan against clan, for a samurai to serve his lord is to win the battle. Okay? So of course, if you run away from the battlefield and your lord lose the battlefield, it's a dishonorable thing or a shameful display. But um, if in order to, for example, win uh, the fight, uh, your opponent loses his weapon because you managed to parry in such an amazingly effective way and now he's got no weapon and you take advantage of that, of that and you cut his throat, it's fine in samurai perspective, particularly during Sengoku Jidai but even before. And of course this is different from the romanticized version of the samurai which is the one that most people think of when they say things like, like the one I said before, I don't know the samurai would never take advantage of advanced technology. Yes, they would. In fact, they did. Alright, so I hope that this one helps with this video. As always, my videos are rather than just a lecture of me teaching, they are a way to, for me to share the things I know and, uh, and also to hear your opinion, stir up a little bit and have an interesting discussion. In fact, I'm always intrigued and interested in hearing what you have to say and what you have to bring to the table. So please let me know what you think of this concept of honor in the Far East and let me know uh, what you think if you, if you think there is something I have missed perhaps in, in the things that I said. There are some interesting episodes to corroborate what I was saying or perhaps you have in mind uh, other examples, for example in history or even other countries that could have a similar concept of honor. But please let me know in the comments below and remember the Metatron has spread his wings.